There's a common scenario that I keep coming across in Webflow design projects, which I call the collection list within a collection list limitation. Currently, this is the end of 2019, Webflow does not allow you to embed collection lists within each other. However, there are a lot of design scenarios where this is desirable. I'm going to use a very simple example here, which is going to be a list of venues, places where we have events, and then a list of events that are attached to those venues. Now, in a lot of client sites, uh, this is actually a problem. They need to show the list of venues from a collection because it's a dynamic concept that they need to be able to manage. And then they need to be able to manage the list of events, but they need to be able to display the venues and events in a correlated way that is easy for website visitors to understand. Now, there is a way to do this. The basic concept of the way is that we have two separate collection lists, one just for venues and one just for events. And then with a little bit of creative tagging and some JavaScript, we then take after the page has loaded and basically stitch those together. The process isn't that complicated. So what I've done is put together a sample Webflow project, which you can look at and dig through. And the goal of this video is to give you uh, a quick reference to the different areas you need to look at to understand how this particular solution approach that I've done works. But first, let me show it to you in action. Here's the, the, the collections that I've got. I've got a list of venues here, very simply named for easy identification. These are not complicated structures, but they can be as complex as you want. The key thing is that as with any collection and any collection item, there is a unique slug. That slug you can think of as its primary key. Webflow already does the work of ensuring that you cannot have more than one collection item in the same collection with the same slug. And that's very helpful. We are going to use that later for our reference and our stitching in the JavaScript code. Now when we look at the events collection, you can see a series of events here. They've got start dates and end dates and they are each attached to a venue and each of the events have a name and you can have locations and photos and videos and whatever else you want. The key thing to be aware of is the relationship between the event, each event and the venue needs to be um, one to many. One venue can have many events. And the way we need to do that stitching is that the event needs to identify the venue that it is in. There may be other ways to approach this. At the end of the day, our primary objective is that an event can only be in one venue. It must be in one and only one venue in order for our JavaScript code to be able to do the tagging and then to do the stitch up process. I found that the easiest way to do that is to create this connection here, which is a reference from the event to the venue. And then in each event, I simply specify that as I want. So here, for example, I'm currently, this one is in venue four. That's gonna be important. So let's have a look at this in action. If I take a look at this demo website, it's a very, very simple one, not styled at all the way that I would normally do, but you can see here, there's a collection list emitting the list of venues in any way you want. And then within each venue, you can see a list of events. Here's one January 17th. Here's one February 29th. And as you go through, you can see how they have immediately collected up nicely and neatly within each venue. And this is the essentially collection list within a collection list mechanism, but working with Webflow's design constraints. So let's have a quick look at how this is implemented. If you look at the web page design in the canvas, and you'll have a link to this, you can look at it yourself and dig through, I highly encourage it. You'll see that there is a master collection list here, which is the venues. And this is going to describe each venue however I want. Every bit of detail here is being placed in position. And then there is going to be a particular place where I want to insert the sublist of events. Now, the way I'm doing that 
is that I am creating an event, what I'm calling the event frame here. And I've given it over here. You can see there's custom div settings with UI equals venue dash events. If you look at the custom attributes, this just gives me a way to find where these are going. And then inside that, there is an HTML embed. And the HTML embed allows me to position the venue slug. Because I need to be able to identify at page rendering time in the web browser where each event is going to go, I actually need to have some kind of easy way to find on the page where that venue is. And the way I'm doing that is by inserting this embed with a div. The div is called UI equals venue events. And there's a selector here which just embeds the venues slug. This makes it fairly easy for my JavaScript to figure out where do the events for this particular venue get moved to on the page. Let's go a little bit deeper. We're going to look at the other collection list now. And the other collection list is fairly buried. It's actually hidden from view. I have this what I call a hidden section here because it's never going to display to the end user. If you were ever to have a situation where you had an event that had never been attached to a venue, you don't want it to be showing up randomly dangling in the footer of your page. So I make this whole section hidden and then but I put the collection list of all of the events in it. Now, you can filter this list. For example, if you only want to show future events, filter the list at this point. It will only render the events that you want. You can put date ranges. You can have other criteria that you want. For example, categorical criteria. And it's going to render this list inside the hidden section. Now, in a similar way, we've got this collection item, we've got our div block, we've got a link block that I am simply using to make the event itself clickable. And then we've got an HTML embed inside this structure as well. And the HTML embed, so I've got, here's my, here's my information about the event, the start date and time, and the name of it, which is what you are seeing here. This structure, this HTML block can be anything you want. The key thing is to be able to frame it and identify where it's going and the, give the, the script a way to shift it there. And I do that with this bit of HTML embed. This HTML embed tells me that this is an event and that I'm wanting to move it to this particular venue slug. Now that that's something nice that Webflow is allowing me to do because I've got the event linked to a venue in a one in, in a yeah basically in a one way single reference way it presents to me all of the venues all of that linked venues attributes as fields that I can display inside my custom embed so that's what I've done I've identified the venue slug that I want the script to match it up to so when it does the shifting it can do that once you go, once that's set up, every uh, every venue is tagged and every event is tagged to the venue it's going to be moved to, we look at the page level code. Page level code has a bit of code, I've set it up as jQuery, that runs at the bottom of the body tag and it's a very, very tiny piece of script. All it's going to do is look for every one of the events, which is anything I've tagged as UI equals venue events. This is just the way that I preferred to do it. It's going to go through each item that matches and it's going to f to basically create the selector which is the string that the jQuery is going to use to identify where to move each event to and then all I do is uh, this append and then I'm shifting it over to the event which is the, the upper collection list we looked at with that specific venue name. So selector equals and then the name of that particular venue's slug. And because we've got this parent parent here is here because of the way Webflow does its collection list rendering, it wraps 
individual collection list items in multiple divs. You may want to play around with that a little bit. What I encourage you to do is if you're playing with this code to create it for your own purpose, make sure to look at what's actually getting rendered using your browser development tools to see what's happening to the HTML itself and to see if your script's having any problems. It took me a little bit to figure out exactly how to get that to work. For me, this pattern is pretty consistent and works pretty smoothly in most scenarios. I'm absolutely certain though, you can make it more generalizable and a little bit even easier to use across multiple projects if this is a pattern that you are using frequently. Everything you need to know is in this project. You can see it working out. I'm also going to include some notes in my blog write-up and you'll see some in the Webflow form as well that explain a little bit about what I was trying to do and how my approach works. Um, I think that's everything you'll need to do to do your own implementation, but if you get stuck, feel free to reach out. Good luck.